A major part of Vice President Harris's platform is the protection of women's rights and health care, specifically since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. According to the Siena College Research Institute's September poll, 66% of voters say that they support abortion being legal, and the majority of voters say that Vice President Harris is better on reproductive rights. Vice President Harris has vowed to restore reproductive freedoms. Dan, with your experience in working towards reproductive rights, will she be able to accomplish this if she wins the election, especially if Congress is majority Republican? Um, if Congress is a majority Republican, it, it will clearly be a harder task, as we've seen the Republican Party has shown. Choose um, and to ensure abortion access across this country. In fact, they've gone and done the opposite restricted abortion access anywhere that they held power. Um, so it will be harder for her to um, enact uh, good abortion justice policies with a Republican Congress, but things that she can do. Uh, she can continue what President Biden started, which is putting forward an executive budget that didn't include the Hyde Amendment, which is the federal ban on providing funding uh, through Medicare or, or through Medicaid on or to cover abortions. Uh, she can continue that trend. And what she can do is stave off the consequences for abortion access that comes with the Donald Trump presidency. That includes invoking the Comstock Act, which would make um, the mailing of abortion pills, like Mifepristone, um, would make that illegal. Uh, that does not require an act of Congress. That can happen um, through enforcement of this 1800s law that's been on the books. Um, so. With a Republican Congress, it becomes infinitely harder to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade that existed uh, for 50 some odd years. Um, and again, I think we'll be seeing tonight um, in the first presidential election since the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe v. Wade, we'll be seeing people, not just women, but people come out and support abortion rights up and down the ballot. There are 10 states that have initiatives to enshrine abortion rights into their constitution. Um, we have seen, I think, three or four of them already pass, even the one in New York, which is looking that it's passing at about 72% approval. Um, the one in Florida, which uh, got 57% of the vote, but because of their th thresholds for passing ballot initiatives, didn't meet the 60% threshold. So even in Florida, which we'll see you know, go strong red for President Trump tonight, um, they reject the draconian six-week abortion ban that has been put in, in their state. Um, and we've seen this in every election since Dobbs. In the reddest states in the union, we have seen people come out and support abortion access. Um, so yes, infinitely harder with a Republican Congress um, infinitely harder to protect bodily autonomy and uh, everyone's right to decide what they want to do with their own body under a Republican administration, um, but a Harris presidency could stem a lot of the worst uh, impulses of the Republican Party. Thank you. And Paul, I'd like to turn it to you and ask, um, according to CNN, the former president says that he would veto a national abortion ban if reelected, but he has also said that he would appoint Robert F. Kennedy to, quote, be in charge of women's health, end quote. And Mr. Kennedy has said that he would support a national abortion ban. Former President Trump has said he believes it should be up to the states to say if women can have the rights to an abortion and takes credit for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. What do these conflicting stances mean for women's rights in the U.S.? Well, to be honest with you, I'm a pro-choice Republican. And I find for the first time that our party platform no longer has a litmus test to be against abortion. And that's a direct result of Donald Trump recognizing reality and re reallocating the decision on abortion to the 50 states. Now, some of the states, New York, Abortion on demand, abortion to the day of birth, no problem. That's what the people of the state of New York, returning it to the voters, adopted. States like Florida, they went with what, six, six weeks? Uh, and now there's a bit of a revolt to that. So you know something? It's not so bad that the people in each state have a decision. I, as a Republican, uh, uh, I feel as though abortion was the third rail of politics for Republicans, but now there is no inherent umbrella right 
protected by the Constitution. And if you believe constitutionalists who review the Supreme, or who make Supreme Court decisions, they felt that was the case. However, back to the states, New York, California, many states, and even Republican states, are enshrining abortion protections. And that's democracy. That's about people voting. And so I think that's a good thing. And I think ultimately, as this levels out over time, it will, each state will seek its own balance, and it will be a reflection of the people in that state voting democratically. Paul, it's, it's the third rail of politics because women are dying. These bans are killing women in these restrictive states. Preventable deaths for common reproductive health care. And, and as a pro-choice Republican, I'm sure you understand how necessary that health care is to a person who's experiencing pregnancy loss. And these women have been dying because the Supreme Court decided that for the first time, this right, this federal right, actually isn't a federal right. It should be limited. And if you travel here, you actually have more rights than if you travel here. And the same doctrine that they used, another doctrine was endorsed that says, hey, you know, this r privacy right that we based Roe on, you know, we also based gay marriage on. We also based the right to contraception on. We also based the right to inter interracial marriage on. And so if we're saying that there is no inherent privacy right in the Constitution, then that doesn't just take away Roe, but it opens, it opens challenges up to gay marriage, to interracial marriage, and to the right to contraception. Because those are the same, they were founded on that same exact constitutional principle. And that could say, all right, send that back to the states. And then we're back in a place we were 10, 15 years ago, where people can't recognize their own marriages. Or now, again, people are dying because they can't get this care. Because governments have stepped in and said, actually, we know better about what you should do with your body than you do. And that's just flat out wrong. Um, it's un-American. And the fact, like you said, the people of Florida, to the tune of 57%, voted against this six-week ban. But because they raised the thresholds to, si or to 60%, that doesn't pass. So you need, I guess, a two-thirds majority to revolt against the law that's killing people in your state now. Well, right? actually, in Florida, it's 60 percent, but that's right. So, and but they that, got 57 percent. But, but that's which, that's which the I, standard for all it, their in uh, all of their ballot initiatives. And those for are sure. those are very great points. But I would like to ask Dr. Call's professional opinion on the abortion rights either going to the states or as a federal government decision. I think we touched on some really important things, including one contradiction in terms of the idea that we should be turning abortion rights back to the states, but we have also relied on an institution, the Supreme Court, that is an unelected body to also make those decisions for large swaths of the population as well. So there are multiple aspects of this, but yes, I believe Dan is right. There are people that are genuinely being harmed by some of these six-week bans, which is why we see so many of these challenges coming up. And I have especially seen uh, women voters have been activated by a lot of these issues as well. Uh, we've seen a lot of the p later breaking polls saying that women potentially are choosing later and choosing Harris for that reason and for some of the other uh, approaches to communication with women that the Trump campaign has done so far. So I think it's important to look at that nuance as well when we're looking at trying to send things back to the states because we want it to be at the hands of the people. But then when we want to talk about the Supreme Court being in charge of that as well, a body that is not elected by the people, I'm not saying that that is either a moral bad or a, normal, or a normative good. I'm saying that those two things, we have to reckon how we feel about them when we're talking about abortion. Absolutely. Well, you Thank know, you. I'd like to and just jump in here for a second because to question the Supreme Court, which is a co-equal branch of government, which is designed to sort out these issues where the Congress and the executive de uh, department cannot come to terms and it's been litigated, 
they are the mechanism that we have. So to question the judgment of the Supreme Court as an unelected body, you know, when it, when it was not a Republican Supreme Court, there was no problem with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her decisions at the time being in the majority. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it kind of swings both ways, obviously, but uh, I have uh, confidence in the Supreme Court uh, composed the, the way it's been over time, and we will uh, we will we'll deal with that over time. And as a scholar of democracy and constitutional democracy, I am well aware of the separation of powers and checks and balances in the government and why the Supreme Court is important. I'm not saying that the Supreme Court is completely invalid or is unimportant. I'm saying that when we were looking at the Supreme Court and you were looking at direct democracy, they are not the same thing. And so when we're talking about them in the same conversation, we should be careful about the way that we talk about that. I 100% believe in checks and balances and separation of powers, and that is not at all the direction that I was going with that. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you all. That was very insightful.